Thank you, Madam Chairman, and thank you to our witnesses today. I appreciate you being here. I'm glad to see this hearing today on how we can leverage technology to help our producers. Farmers and ranchers have been using precision agriculture technology to improve yields, reduce inputs, and optimize water usage. But there are more ways that we can boost access to these tools right now. I've written several bills that focus on expanding access to advanced technologies and ensuring farmers and ranchers can fully utilize the benefits of precision ag technology. My precision ag loan program would provide dedicated financing for precision ag technologies. My PRECISE Act would leverage existing conservation programs to increase access to precision ag technologies. And my last Acre Act would expand network connectivity across farm and ranch land so these technologies can work reliably, reliably in the field. These bills have received broad stakeholder support. I appreciate the love this panel has shown these bills today, and I thank many of my colleagues here on this committee who have uh, joined me as co-sponsors on that, those bills. Just last week, the joint FCC-USDA Precision Ag Connectivity Task Force voted to include both the PAL Act and the Last Acre Act as part of their final recommendations. We know that precision ag technologies give producers the ability to monitor and decrease their use of inputs, like fertilizer and water, while still producing safe, high-quality crops. For example, precision agriculture's ability to optimize water usage is enormously important, particularly for our western states. Nebraska, for example, has 8.6 million acres of irrigated, irrigated cropland, the most in the whole United States. Dr. Griffiths, in your written testimony, you described some of the benefits of precision agriculture. And would you please expand on the economic environmental benefits that can be gained through the use of precision ag technologies? Yes, thank you. Um, basically, uh, the technologies allow much more specific information to be provided to the farmer or the rancher. As a result, they can use their resources sparingly only when and where needed. So that's basically why costs are, are reduced. We can also, um, AI can allow us to identify and develop um, uh, plants that can um, can can be um, harvested more frequently so that you could actually potentially have two crops per year rather than one. I know there's a lot of research on the, the bio side of agriculture that's looking at how to um, how to develop these new uh, uh, crops and products or new things that you can grow, excuse me. Right. Same thing in animals, where we're doing that kind of research as well. But basically, that's what AI allows us to do, right. be more Thank precise you. and specific. Thank you. Uh, despite the benefits that uh, we've discussed here today, producers continue to face challenges adopting new precision ag technologies. And that's mostly due to the high costs and the lack of connectivity in rural areas. So Mr. Heidman, I appreciate your testimony supporting the inclusion of my precision ag package in the Farm Bill. As a technology developer, can you explain some of the financial challenges facing producers in adopting these advanced technologies? And then secondly, even if producers can acquire the technology, what barriers prevent them from being able to fully leverage the precision ag technologies on their own farm? Yeah, the technologies that we're talking about, you know, graphical processing units, cameras, et cetera, are expensive technologies to start with. So I think the, the first barrier is that initial cost of, of the technology, and that's a barrier to entry for some growers at some sizes into the market, which is, I think, why uh, it's important for these new-to-world type of technologies for us to not just work on the technology development, but the business model that accompanies it, right? Um, we can shift the business model to make it more amenable to smaller farmers and pay for use type of, of, of mechanisms, those sorts of things. So the, the business model I would expect to shift over time as well. Your second question, Senator, uh, is uh, a connectivity question, pure and simple. Uh, there are fundamentally technologies and, and an increasing number of them 
uh, that will be in the marketplace, there are in the marketplace today and will be in the marketplace in the future that are connectivity dependent. Connectivity ubiquitously throughout whatever the field is that the farmer happens to be using. And not just building to building uh, to be able to connect there. We've got to be able to look again at that last acre if we're a truly going to make a difference. Based, yeah. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much.